Come on, let's go outside. Let's take a walk in the sun. There are things to learn and things to see. A big wide world for you, your dog, and me. Dog Talk. Hi, guys. Welcome to Dog Talk. I'm Pat Becker, and I would like to introduce my guest today. How are you? This is Sh Shanae Hishaw. Hi, Shaw. Hi, Shaw. And we welcome you. And this beautiful dog is Chalk and he is a beautiful black lab. Now this is a working lab. Uh, if he had lost a little weight, he probably could do it. Now. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously he gets treated very well. I went very well to In, the, in the true sense. So how long have you had this dog? Since he was two weeks old. Ah, and where did you get him? I was given to, I, well, he was given to me by Joe Sid Ward, a friend of mine ah. in Al Sutton. Well, what a wonderful gift. Oh, yeah. And obviously, he has enjoyed being with you. He sure loves you. Look at this. Oh, yes. Yeah, bless his heart. Well, he labs are great. We know that. You know, they take a licking and keep on ticking, as they say. Oh, they yes. They take a lot, of, uh, a lot of life and just make it work for them. And that's why I love them. And we appreciate so much your coming in. And uh, so he lives with you? Yes, ma'am. Obviously, he's sticking to you here. He's your constant companion. Oh, yes. So so how do you interact with him at all? You take him on walks and do that oh, sort of thing? We walk, we go to the dog park and Excellent. just run around the Excellent. backyard sometime for well, exercise. I tell you, he is lovely. And uh, I'd like to make you the dog of the week, your dog, the dog of the week. Oh, thank this you. is a $100 gift certificate to A1 Pet Emporium. Okay. And I have some treats for him and a few little gifts here. I'm gonna set it down because I actually have someone who wants to talk with your okay. dog. Her name is Naomi McDonald. Naomi, come in here. Hi. Hi. How nice to see? meet you. Great to see you, Pat. Good to see you. Now, Naomi actually speaks to dogs. I've had her on my speak radio show, I've had her on my television show, and she is the real thing. So how are you doing? I'm doing great. So explain to me exactly what it is you do. Well, I s speak to them spirit to spirit, mm -hmm. or mind to mind. Uh -huh. And so I can delve in and ask questions with my mind and I get answers back. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's excellent. So you have been, have you been observing this guy? Can we, t if we think he'll turn around maybe here and, and we'll give him a little, maybe if come I here, turn sweetheart. With him. Yeah, yeah. Come here, sweetheart. Come here, He's okay. okay. That's a good boy. Yeah, there you he's go. Okay, okay yeah. great. Very attached to you. Oh, yes. Is there anything specific you'd like to know? Is there anything you've been working on that you'd like to know about chalk? Well, Health-wise, <laughs> do you know any of that? Well, I have to be careful with health-wise because I'm not a veterinarian. Okay, okay. And so in- Has he had any issues in at all? situations no, like that? No, just a shaking. He's been shaking, a little shake since he was a baby. Yeah. And his dog veterinarian just says it's because he's nervous. Yeah, I'm sure that he is. I'm sure that he is. What are you feeling with him, Naomi? Well, what I'd like to do is, kind of make a little theme for today, and that would be that a lot of times we don't realize that our animals choose us. We think that things come happenstance, and this is a puppy that I have chosen. But in reality, what I come to understand is that the animals do choose us, mm -hmm. and they always come with a purpose. There's something that they want to accomplish with their human. So what I'd like to do is ask him what it is that he brings for you. Okay. Because the animals so beautifully bring, they bring richness to our lives, they bring love to our lives, they allow us to love a lot of times in ways that we don't, we can't open up to a human. And so let me ask him and see if, you know, what his purpose might be for you. Okay. How about that? How about that? Okay, you can see that he's, you know, he's, he's comfortable here in the sense that he's with you, mm -hmm. but he's very bonded right there. Your caring for him is bringing out a part of your personality that's making you feel more of a purpose. Okay, you're stepping out into the world in a way that you had a hard time doing before you had him. 
Oh, okay. Okay. In that sense, as a matter of fact, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Yes. Okay, so he's bringing a part of your personality to the surface as a caregiver, but also when you take him out, when you do things with him, when you go to the vet, you have the ability to speak for someone else, and that's bringing that out for you. Okay. Okay. And, and I see this. I worked at a, um, at Paws Around Town doing animal sessions and one day this, a big burly man came in with tattoos and he was redheaded and on his arm was a Maltese, a, t a tiny, tiny little Maltese. And I, you know, I just kind of smiled when they came this in. This seems went, an odd combination. <laughs> <laughs> this is an odd combination. And he sat down and, and, and she looked at me and she said, I let my dad's soft hang out. How neat, how and neat. I, and so I said that to him, and he was clueless. He said, well, what does that mean? And I said, you've opened up to this dog in a way that you've never opened up before. And he says, I'm even nicer to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and because of the dog. Because of the dog. And so he, he didn't go choose this dog. This dog chose him. There was a purpose. There was a purpose. There's always a purpose in our animals. And, so and, and, you know, and, and I have noticed that too. We talk about happenstance or coincidence, something like that. For this person to give you that puppy, was it the right puppy? The puppy knew. Always. Had, had that puppy not, he might have given you some problems. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which a lot of dogs who are not happy with where they are, you know, the diggers, the fence jumpers, the, you know, because they, they're not allowed to connect. And I'm not a, a telepathic, but uh -huh. those things I know just from dealing with dogs for so long, those are not happy dogs. This dog does not want to leave your side. This mm -hmm. dog is so comfortable with you. You bring something to him and obviously he brings something to you. But I am comforted that, that he said that to you because that's, that's just kind of the way that I was thinking too. I, I thought, Mm -hmm. He has a purpose. This dog has a purpose. Oh, yes, he does. So it, it's amazing. Uh -huh. So have you had a lot of people with lost dogs? Have you helped find some lost dogs recently? I do help find with lost dogs, lost animals. It's interesting. It's, it, it just depends. I've found them because of a scent. I found them because of something that I saw. It just depends. And it just comes to you that way. It does. Just as speaking with him. Uh -huh. So he has kind of relaxed here, and I notice he's kind of swinging over here to you. What, yeah. what else is he telling us? Well, he is, um, he's anticipating something. What are you doing when you leave here? Well, we have a couple of runs to make. He loves to ride. Okay, oh, that's okay. what it is. Yes. Okay, so he's he anticipating up so in the seat like a human being. Yeah, he, okay. he's, he's okay. looking forward to that. Then he's yeah. going. When's this going to be over? <laughs> he's going. Shanae, okay, I'm through with this. Let's go. Uh, okay, well, it's time to go. Yeah, that's interesting. It's time to go. Well, we mm -hmm. thank you so much. That is oh, so welcome. enlightening and. Take that, uh, you know, and if you, if you need to get in touch, if Shanae needs to call you, how does she get in touch with you, or how does anybody get in touch with you? Um, Naomi B. McDonald is my website. My phone number's on there. My email address is on there. I'll be glad to help in any way I can. Thank you. Okay. Well, we are blessed by the three of you, and I'm going to give this to you. Yeah. Thank you so very, very, very much. Go into A1 Pet Emporium as one of your chores today, and you can take him in there with you. Uh, the certificate's down here. It's a $100 gift certificate, and buy him something oh, really okay. neat. Thank you. There are little things in there and little treats. He's already ha gotten into that. <laughs> See, that was probably he's, what he's waiting on. <laughs> exactly. That's what he was anticipating. <laughs> Naomi, as usual, it's wonderful, and we well, great. appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Back? Oh, sure. Okay, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. 
Welcome back, guys. As you can see, we've got a good group over here. <laughs> Duke's is excited. Duke is excited. Shannon Reed is here. Hi. How are you, Shannon? Good, how are Shannon you? Shannon is with the Red Cross, and actually, you work for some I of the Red with Cross, Shannon too. I Shannon at the Red Cross. So, Duke has got his little, little outfit on here to be sure that he has all of the uh, stuff that he needs, either to go hiking or to go with an emergency, something like that. He's always prepared. He's like a Boy Scout. He's a, he is like a Boy Scout, and we're just going to let him go wherever he wants to go, because he's the Duke. Shannon, so tell me, you all, I have been noticing recently, you all mm -hmm. have been in the news helping out so much with the mm -hmm. floods and all of the tornadoes. Of course, you're always there. Mm -hmm. What a blessing for us all. Mm -hmm. We're we're really, really excited to be able to help people, and I'm so excited you asked us on today. Um, we're excited to talk about um, dog preparedness yeah. because we've been noticing that people they're making plans for themselves, but they're not always including their dogs. Exactly. That's important. So you've got a, a thing up here to show us. What is this? Yeah. Um, so we're just going to talk a little bit about some really um, good key points today about things that you should um, remember when you're trying to prepare for your dog. So the first step is you always want to make a plan. First, you want to make sure that when you're making your plan, you know which hotel and motels um, are along your evacuation route and that will allow your dog to stay. You want to make sure that when you're evacuating your dog can stay with you. Um, also we want to make sure that you know which friends, relatives, or boarding facilities you can send your dogs to in case you have to evacuate here and they have to go there. You just want to make sure you Good know point. you have all that. What if you don't have friends because Duke doesn't have a lot of friends. If you don't have friends, <laughs> you want to make sure um, oh, you know boarding facilities, um, neighbors, exactly. um, extended relatives, those types of things. Yeah. Um, also you may want to be prepared if you have to evacuate you might have to be house separately from your dog so know that yeah. so prepare them for that um, and prepare yourself for that we also want to make sure that all of your pets vaccinations are always up to date because whenever you go to a Red Cross shelter or you go to um, an, a boarding facility or maybe a motel they always want to see that your vaccinations are up to date yeah so you want to make sure that you have record of that also you want to consider having your pet microchipped so in case something happens uh, and you become that's separated really important. you really want to make sure um, that they're microchipped so you can locate them. Um, also, we want to make sure that, you know, disaster, sometimes we have warning, sometimes we don't, but if we do have some warning, make sure that you bring your dogs inside, make sure um, that you're kind of ready to go and you have all your supplies ready. Oh, excellent. So, you, Ted, you had uh, some suggestions. What are, what are you uh, oh, thinking okay. about? Well, and, oh, Duke, pay attention, okay? Sometimes he doesn't pay attention and that's a problem. He's gone into the audience. Um, prepare for the unexpected, okay? We all know that, uh, you know, you find a friend or a relative that can help you out, that knows what's going on. Duke's not paying attention. Um, you know, and uh, pets health care in, in a legal will. We talked about that a lot, Pat. You want to make sure that, you know, there's a plan for your pet when you're gone. Oh, exactly. So if you precede your pet, then you have a plan for someone to take care of the pet and uh, that sort of thing. So what are some of the tips then here? All right. Well, you need to find a couple of friends or relatives who will agree to be temporary caregivers. Um, and that's just in case, you know, you get in an accident, you get hurt, you can't. T I mean, I got a big dog. So if I break my arm... I'm in a little bit of a pickle. Yes, you're not kidding. And Pat's already agreed temporarily she will take Duke if I break my arm. He likes to run around out here. Um, give the keys to your home to somebody. Uh, someone you trust, not a stranger. You don't want to give away your keys to a stranger. Um, and uh, feeding and care instructions, that's really important because when you give your dog to someone, you're trusting that they feed them twice a day. Exactly. Or if, you know, Your some dogs routine. Need, exactly. Right, some dogs need to be fed more. Yeah, less. I like the thing about the wallet card. What is that? Well, let's say something happens to me on my person in my wallet. I will have instructions for my dog uh -huh. and all the information. Maybe medications. Uh, very important. Duke doesn't have any meds, but. He's getting a little gray in the beard, so yeah. there might be some meds down the, down the line. So I can see that, so that if you're in an accident, heaven forbid, you know, then you have uh, something in your wallet that tells what veterinarian you have. Yeah, your doctor. To the, the number for it. And I have someone who can come get that dog. Puts it on. I know in accidents, a lot of times dogs escape. Mm -hmm. you know and then there's double the problem well that's great I appreciate it Thank you. as a matter of fact I had a couple things too that I wanted to talk about let me put this one down and we'll go to the next one okay 
This is really interesting because in case of fires, guys, there's a, a plan that you must have. Smoke detectors, always smoke detectors. Mm -hmm. You keep your wallets, your purses, and your cell phones in the room with you. This is the, um, this is the important thing. I mean, we don't ever think about uh, having a fire. Gosh, we don't want fires, but the first thing that a dog will do is a dog will hide, and you have to know that. We need a list in your wallet of the, or the closest fire station. You need to call 911, of course, very quickly. A pet should be with you at night. This is, a, this is an interesting thing because a lot of people house their pets in the kitchen away from the, of the bedroom. Um, hopefully, that uh, the dogs stay with you in your bedroom. That is a bonus because then you have that dog. If the dog is loose, he'll hide. Where does he hide? Underneath furniture. And remember, the smoke rises so the dog dog will not have that much smoke. They will be down and think they are all, way, all right and comfortable, but they are not, so you must have them. Keep leashes in your bedroom. Keep leashes at the doors in case you go near the fire, the crates at the exit doors if you have to um, keep your dog away from you in the evening. Determine the best escape routes. Have a plan. As Shannon so Today. aptly put it, having a plan is the most important thing because fires are horrendous and a lot of pets get lost. Keep that pet with you. Take that pet with you. That's the way to do it. Get a GPS for the pets. Oh, that would be good, too. So, Shannon, I see you have uh, one more with us for this here. Yeah, so it's very, very important. Um, also, when you're kind of making your plan, you want to think about you need to also make an emergency preparedness kit for your pets. Uh -huh. You want to make sure that you have everything that they need so they can feel safe and comfortable while they're away from home. So the first things, um, you know, get all the all the items you need. Food, water, um, you know, sturdy leashes. Um, if they take medication, you wanna take their medication, copies of their medical records. Um, it's very, also very, very important to have a first aid kit. And um, it's very, very important to maybe know a little bit of pet CPR, um, pet first aid. So the Red Cross, we have an app for that, um, if you're interested. Also, one of the most important things you can have is current photos of yourself and your dog. So in case you get separated, some you know, you can be identified, you can be um, reunited. And one thing we do at home is we keep a backpack of Duke stuff. Like at home, you might have a preparedness yes, kit for yourself perfect. and your family. Perfect. We have a preparedness kit for Duke. Right. All for him and his backpack. So uh, uh, if, to get all of this information, can someone call the Red Cross and get some of this? Mm -hmm. How can, do they do that? They can contact us at the Red Cross. They can also download. We have a pet emergency preparedness app. Mm -hmm. has lots of great in interactive tutorials, but also information there. Um, but also, we're always willing to talk to people who are prepared I appreciate it so much. You guys, this has been so great, so mm -hmm. informative, and I hope people will take it to heart because they're having a plan, having your kit, having something that, that you you can say that let's practice the escape for the fire and all of this kind of stuff. It's so important you to save attention? your pet's life. I think he was. Okay, okay, as long as he got the message. <laughs> I think he did, and we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. I am so excited today because I've got two things, that, two issues that I'm excited about. Number one, that Crystal Mabe is here. How are you with Thank Orphaned you. Angels? Thank you. And you brought a couple little angels with you. We did. Yeah, and that's, you know, these, these are absolutely precious. And Katerina, how are you? I'm Katerina great. Connor, she is the new Dog Talk Girl. And we, we absolutely are thrilled that you have decided to do that with us. We have a lot of fun, do we not, Renee? Oh, yeah. A lot of, fun. <laughs> of course, Renee is, is one of the dog talk girls that has been there since we started, and I am so grateful to her. A dog lover, a people lover, a darling person, beautiful, <laughs> got everything going for her, and now we have you, and I am so delighted. Thank you. Now, tell me, Crystal, about your, about your rescue. Um, we're a rescue that we're grounded in Edmond, Oklahoma. We're a foster home-based program. Um, we do mostly small dogs, however, 
We'll take anything if we have a foster for it. We've actually had a parrot, a cow. Wow. Um, just wow. about anything. So where did you get these puppies? Um, these two puppies were in a shelter by Fort Worth. Wow. And they, um, I do a lot of parvo treatment, and they came up from Fort Worth to be treated for parvo. Wow. So you, you cured them? Yes. Excellent, excellent. And, and the value of these darling dogs is huge. They are precious, they are sweet, and um, God bless you for doing it. Well, thank you. Know, you. We, and actually, it's a joy. Oh, they are, you know, these two especially would be great. And they're for adoption. Yes, so they are. anybody that sees these little pups, they are absolutely darling. Uh, they look like a cross between a Brussels griffin and um, another little ter Oh, that's what you are. You got well, your, yeah, they said that's that. that's why we ended up with them because the shelter actually thought they were Brussels griffon uh -huh. and they uh, knew that the National Brussels Griffon Rescue, that I worked a lot with them, and ah. uh, they're actually not their Shih Tzu Chihuahua. I started to say that you can see the, another breed in there sure. very easily. Well, we are so pleased that, that you came out with us today. Well, thank and you for we would us. like to make a donation of $500 to your organization. What? And uh, we hope that uh, you will continue to do what you do. Keep us uh, clued in. If you need help, give us a holler. Thank and you so much. You don't know what that means to us. We've got so many special needs dogs right now. You don't know the value of this. Um, we've got a dog that's getting that's crippled that we're having a wheelchair made for. And we have, um, I can't even think this threw me off so far. We have a 120 pound Mastiff that we worked a month to catch that she's heartworm positive and the treatment on a 120 pound dog is Thank you very much. Well, you know what? I, I am very moved by everything that you're doing, and I will Thank raise you. that to $1,000. No. <laughs> yes. Are you? We are so pleased that rescues like this, folks, it is an enormous, enormous job, and we appreciate it very, very deeply because these people work and work very hard, and we thank you. I thank Girls, you. am I right? Yes. yes. Absolutely. We're going to take a break. And we'll be right back. Here's a quick tip for helping your dogs maintain a normal body temperature throughout the summer season. Provide cool water pools for them to hop into. Plastic baby pools are great. Also, new plastic cement mixing tubs are very inexpensive and sturdy. We are always talking about interacting with your pets. Sports of all kinds are available. There are dancing kind of uh, issues that you can do, little fun things, uh, going to parks. But the wonderful thing about it is that we do have some sports that are available to us. Renee, that you have done a lot of agility. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Katarina, welcome again. We are so glad to see you and glad for you to join the Dog Talk Girl group. So tell me, what is it you like about agility, Renee? Uh, my favorite part is how much you bond with your dog yeah. through the entire experience, because you have to le make them learn to trust you uh -huh. and follow you, and it's just great. Yeah, it's such a fast sport oh, yeah. when you compete with it. Now, yeah. there again, you don't have to compete. You can just do it for fun. Dogs love it. Yeah, it gets their energy out, and it's great exercise, too. Super exercise. So you've entered a lot of uh, agility contests and things mm -hmm. like that. So you, you do have to run fast. Oh, yeah. You have to run fast, and what? You have to get your dog to the, to the proper jump. Yeah. Does that take a long time? Um, it depends on the dog sometimes. Uh -huh. It depends on how well they listen to you and how long it takes uh, you to teach them. Sure, and that's, and that's a, it's a process, mm -hmm. but it's a fun, fun thing oh, to do, yeah. is it not? Yeah, I just, I just love it, and whether you compete or whether you do it just for fun, that's the big thing. Now, I'd like to also welcome Brandy Joyner. How are you? Hi, it's Pat. It's so good to see you, and you have a, a gen one with you today. This is uh, Jonah. Jonah. And Jonah actually helps his grandma with the barn hunts, That's doesn't right. he? That's right. So uh, tell me about uh, barn hunting. So barn hunt is a sport that we kind of allow dogs like Cinch to exercise their instinct to want to kill stuff. Yeah. But we can do that in a safe way where they don't actually get to kill stuff. But they think it's a great time. We go into a barn, they search with 
hay bales and straw and look for rats. And yeah. Cinch thinks it's the best time ever. So. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, I think the important thing there too, and again, whether it's agility and you see these dogs running around and jumping these jumps, just like, it's just as though they were horses, that sort of thing, it's wonderful. And then the barn hunts, any breed can do it. Absolutely, and any breed. Small breeds. Small breeds, terriers breeds. that love it, yes, labs the, that shouldn't but do yeah. and everything in between so. yeah so it is also a contest you can also enter a contest Absolutely. with it and i know i have taken my my beagles and my uh, canine hounds mm -hmm. and just for fun just, just for like fun. the agility it's just for yeah. fun you can do it for fun Absolutely. but you also can compete Absolutely. so how does that happen um so the competitions happen we had one um, at twister agility here in oklahoma city and it's just a group of us got together and said, let's have a competition. So we how often it. do you do it? Um, we play it a lot, uh -huh. um, just for fun. And competitions, there's usually one a month within about a three-hour drive. So when is your next time that you'll be doing this? Um, I'll be doing this into September. Um, there's a competition actually over in Arkansas, September 19th and 20th. Uh -huh. But we'll probably have just a fun class weekend out here, either the weekend before or after that. And then so. after September? Um, we have it monthly. Oh, so every month. Yes. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Folks, this is the way to go. Interacting with your pet is so important. Getting them off the couch, out of the backyard, definitely off the chain, and taking them to an activity like this that everybody will enjoy. So keep in mind, whether it's agility and you have fun running your dogs, just, just playing, going out in the park, doing whatever, or if you're going to do the barn hunting, and as I say, I really enjoyed the barn hunting. It is an exciting sport. They do not harm the rats. The rats are put in canisters, and the rats themselves, actually, I think Nancy Haddock keeps them at Twister Agility, Absolutely. and they, they live there and have a very happy life. But I think the rats kind of enjoy it, too. Yeah. They know exactly what's going on, so it does not scare them. And as I say, they are not hurt whatsoever. But these dogs really, really enjoy finding them. And they find them, then they've got to alert and when they alert there's a time frame on it and the dogs have to jump up onto something they have to go through a tunnel so it is a process but what fun is that and as I say any breed can do this every breed can do this just like agility we've seen dogs that do agility that are chihuahuas oh yeah and they are fast oh, huh. <laughs> now you have which ones I have an English Springer an English Springer and which is the one that you use right yep so this is great well Katarina, we're going to really put you into a lot of work from now on. You realize that. So what we're going to do is to kind of tell you what's going on. We have a, uh, a Halloween video that we're going to do um, mm -hmm. one of these days. We do it every year. And we do a Thanksgiving and we do a Christmas. So we're going to get you to volunteer for all of those. It has been great, guys. Have a wonderful week. And remember, interact with your dog. There couldn't be a better way to connect. Get them off those couches. They get too heavy. That's not a good thing. We want them healthy. We want them happy. And that is the way that they are happy. Have a great week. And we'll see you later. Dogs. We're talking about dogs. Talking about big dogs, uh-huh. Talking about little dogs, oh yeah. Chasing the ball, chasing the cat, digging hole, thing like that. Dogs, talking about dogs. Laughing dogs, sad dogs, happy dogs, mad dogs, dogs. Just talking about dogs. Lost in the love.